Yes. Hello, my dear friends. Very good morning. Very warm welcome to you all. Myself, Arun Marepalli from Hyderabad. So, I'll be taking for you for the CS professional course of module 1 of new syllabus, drafting appearance and pleadings and the corporate garments. Drafting for both old and new syllabus too. Clear? Now, before we step into the concepts, the chapter number 1, let us understand some important issues with respect to your examinations part and also with respect to the overview of the subject as to what we are going to study, what is the importance of this particular subject in our profession. Clear? Now, before I start up that, see generally, I come across these kind of questions generally from these uh, students in every batch. Like, you know, sir, I could pass this uh, in every subject, like uh, I land somewhere between 40 to 49 or 40 to 50 likewise, but I couldn't pass that module. That is, I'm not able to get that average. It means I'm passing in I'm passing in every subject. I'm scoring more than 40. But at the end of the day, the module I'm not getting 50% average. That's the first problem. Second is that, sir, it's not possible for me to complete out the entire syllabus. Or I'm taking a risk of leaving two or three chapters. Or Sir, whatever the topics that I didn't studied, only those questions have come in the examination. Very favorite. Right? So, sir, I studied the entire thing, sir. Only some three topics have left. And only those questions have come in the examination. Three. Sir, I have studied really well. I have written really well. Even I have given some marks for the examination. I mean, the marks uh, with the answers what I have written. I thought of scoring, I will score at least 75 to 80 somewhere. But when you receive the results, when you get the results, land up somewhere in 50 or 55 or 40. What do you say? The examiner didn't correct well, sir. Right? Next. Open book system. Very important thing. Sir, my friend have scored 70 or 80 likewise in the last time that he have written. So, I will go for that because he got a good mark. Or my friend have said that only theoretical questions has been asked in this paper. So, I will take that particular paper. Or my friends have got very good marks in this particular paper. So, I will go for that paper. My friend have taken that. I am going, go, going for that. Sir, something I have to take. I will take some paper. Very cool answer. Or you know, in, in this particular field, I am going to practice in the long term. Or I have studied something in executive level, IPR say for example, I have studied something in executive level, so I have some background of this particular topic, so I will go for IPR. Same with respect to labor law. You don't have any much practicality over there sir, only theoretical part, so I will go for that. So several answers or several factors that you consider before selecting this particular elective paper. But what actually you need to do? Let us tackle that question first of all. Clear? Now, first one is with respect to your 50% average. So, very common problem which you have experienced, maybe you have experienced in your executive level or the final level, where you will get more than 40 in each paper, but you could not get that 50% average in the respective module. How to tackle that question? Sir, what my, what my suggestion is for that, you select one or two subjects from each module, at least one subject in each module. And your preparation shall be in such a way that at any given circumstance, from any corner the question may be asked, whatever the case it may be, you need to score at least some 65 in that paper. Be whatever the question paper, or how, how hard or whatever that is it is. But at any given circumstance, you are going to get 65 or plus in that particular paper what you have selected. Whereby, what happens with that is whatever the amount of marks that you may get in some other paper, maybe somewhere around 40 to 45, the deficit of 5 marks will be covered by that subject which you have selected. If at all you are selecting more than one subject is fine. But the first thing is that at least select one subject so that you could cover up that particular deficit amount of 5 or 6 marks likewise. We have seen people getting 149 or 148 and losing that module. So, you, you know, you try to select, you do, try to do some smart work so that you could overcome that particular problem. Sir, which subject shall I take? That solely depends on you because see, for me taxation may be easy. 
for you it may be a hard subject for drafting it may be hard for me it may be easy for you so likewise it solely depends upon you and your preparation right so try to select in each module one particular subject and prepare in such a way see whenever you are selecting such subject then do not compromise you have to be thorough with that particular subject at a, from any corner the question may be asked you shall answer that that shall be the preparation for that particular subject so focus more on one subject so that the 50% average can be covered up clear now sir it is not possible for me to complete of the entire syllabus because uh, yes I, I agree that you don't have uh, alternate day examination though you say but it is of uh, if at all you are writing all the three modules then it is nine days examination so it's not that easy to complete of the entire preparation or entire uh, syllabus within that eight to nine hours given or sometimes you may be leaving in your preparation itself some two or three chapters or one two chapters or some topics and for the bad sake or good sake only those questions will come in the examination right and you have a very good uh, reason sir i have left only those topics so only those questions have come so i can't do anything <laughs> right so who will do see obviously what i what i'm trying to say sir yes of course i agree that you may leave some topic fine that is fine but you shall have some knowledge about those topics right you cannot simply leave that entirely read from scanners or have a glance over the topics at least once so that even if see you cannot expect that only from whatever the eight chapters that you have studied out of ten guns that you are going to write maybe something may go wrong risk factor will always be there so don't take hundred percent risk of that two two chapters what you have left have some glance over the topic so that if some question comes you can write something over that particular answer something over here is only relevant material I mean relevant context not you know writing biographies and uh, what you write in your degree examination I'm not talking about those things I'm not talking about filling up papers here quality wise you can write one or two points so that you'll get at least one or two marks so for one mark two marks you want me to read entire thing the importance of one mark two mark one or two marks you'll get when you get a 149 or 148 marks as those people who have got that so what I'm trying to say is yes you may leave that yes I agree Sometimes some factors will be there, time factor or whatever it is. You could not complete of the entire syllabus, but at least read from the scanner or previous question papers, or as a whole try to understand the syllabus. I mean the context, what it is. So at least you can write something about that answer. You can try to attempt that instead of leaving, instead of getting uh, zero. It is better to get one mark, right? So likewise, you can do. And when you have left these two, tap, uh, two chapters and you are only having a glance over these, then the remaining 8 chapters need to be perfect again. See again you cannot say from that 8 chapters again you left some topics. Then you are taking the risk automatically because you already taken a risk of leaving 2 chapters. Now from the remaining chapters again you are leaving some topics then it is not acceptable. Clear everyone. So yes you may leave sometimes. I, of course, I am not suggesting you to leave the topics, of course. Yes, if at all you are leaving, then do not leave likewise. Have some glance over the topics, then move on. Clear? And coming to the elective paper. Uh, if I have discussed all these public talks or getting masks from your friends or your friend have taken some paper, so you are going to take that. See, uh, what, I, what I suggest is, Without looking into the context and the paper, you cannot select that elective paper because it is not that easy. See how taxation is hard for you or some other papers. Same like your open book only. It's not that easy. Do not think that sir, you can take the material. How many materials you want, you can take the material to the examination and see and write the exam. No, it's not that easy. Rather, it's more tougher than the other papers because the examiner is not expecting from you to write as it is what is being given in the material. Or sometimes for a four mark question, you can find three, four pages answer in your ICSA material. Four mark. Now, so for four mark, you are going to write three pages answer there. It will take almost one hour. Yes or no? It will take almost one hour to write that three pages answer. And for one hour, you are going to get four mark. And likewise, maybe some five questions have been asked. 
Where is the time now? Three hearts only have three. You will write three answers. That is 12 marks. Then what you do? So it is not expected from you to write as it is what has been given in the SSA material. I did not write the paragraphs and paragraphs in the examination here again. It's less like a normal paper. So the only thing is that you're going to interpret the answers and write over there. People generally say, sir, uh, I'll study at least once during my preparation. I'll study at least one hour daily so that I can complete off because it's only, a, I mean, I'm going to see and write the answer. So I'll just have a novel reading. But at least, surely I'm going to study at least once before the examination. What will be the reality? Sir, I couldn't find any time for the remaining papers where I need to understand or by heart and write the examination. How can you expect me to read that material where I'm going to see and write? Right? So, obviously, I'm going to write, uh, study. It. When you're going to study on the day of examination, that means at the most three, three hours or four hours. Again, your mindset will say, yeah, uh, anyway, I'm going to open the material and write. So what is the thing to study there? No, very, very wrong thing that you're doing there. Sir, what, rather what I feel is copying is more harder than writing on our own because copying takes more time because you don't have a continuous flow and you don't have a ready-made answer over there. If you have studied, you have a ready-made answer in your mind at least. And you can you can write that con in a continuous flow. But in this uh, elective paper, you're going to read the entire material. I mean, three, four pages. Extract from that pages, what are those points you need to write? Then write the answer. Searching itself takes more time. Searching itself takes more time. Then where is the time to write again? So it's not that easy. It's not that easy to write these elective paper. What I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to say, sir, first of all, before selecting an elective paper, look after the previous question papers and try to search those questions in your material, be it soft copy or hard copy. I'm not saying to write the examination here. Just try to search out those questions in the paper, in the material and get to know whether you could able to search that or not. And you'll get to know what type of questions he's been asking. It may be a practical one or it's maybe a practical or it may be a normal paper. I mean, theoretical part. But if you say three, four question papers, three, four attempts, then you can come to a conclusion as to yes, this paper is fine for me. Then select that paper. Maybe your friend may, go, may have got some, uh, some less marks in that, but you may be comfortable with that subject. Right. So, Apart from that, what the other thing that you can do? Yes, of course, you need to study on a daily basis, but it shall not be a novel reading. But from whatever the topic that you are studying, extract those points that are important and that is that ought to be written in the examination. Likewise, say for example, you have three, four pages answer. Right? Now, Say for example, if that question comes in the examination, then sh you shall have a ready-made answer. Now you prepare that ready-made answer for you. From the entire material, I mean from that three, four pages, mark there or highlight somewhere as to this is the first point, this is the second point. Like say for example, Now, say this concept have appeared in the examination, a particular concept. Now, like th this, this is a ready-made material because it's a revision mode book, not even the uh, material. Now, say for example, this is of all these almost some three pages answer. What you shall do, write down in your material whenever you're reading on a daily basis, as to yes, this is my first point. This is my second point. 
this is my third point then say for example if a question comes on these lines then directly you have a you have a ready made answer you need not read once again from here to here again because yes you have got the first point you have got the second point you have got the third point and you are not going to waste any time in searching there that could be one smart work you can do so try to make out and try try to you know get some time for reading this old elective paper too it's not that easy be it old syllabus or the new syllabus and for the new syllabus you have these uh, multidisciplinary case laws too and even you don't have index for that the case laws index i mean try to prepare the case law index the serial number the pay, the case law the ruling the page number in your icsc material at least you have an index for that so try to do some smart work for this it is not that easy to write in the examination that is what i am trying to say here clear everyone another important thing sir i am going to write all the three modules because i have almost 7 months time so i'll write that slowly two months will go off five months will be there. sir instead of writing nine subjects because i have only five months so i'll write two modules because instead of wasting time in the third module i can focus much upon this first and second okay fine then again two months will go off sir i'm just thinking sir whether to write the two modules or one module because yes time is gone we can't do anything so rather i'll prepare i'll focus much on the first module i'll clear it off then obviously confidence will come then next next attempt i'll write the two modules ever experienced this i've experienced from lots of students sir please stand on your decision if you are you are saying three modules yes your preparation shall be in such a way if you are you are studying you are saying two modules the preparation shall be in such a way don't waste your time don't think you have 7 months nothing that 7 months will go off just like that clear so whatever the class that you are attending not only this this class whatever the class it may be please study on a daily basis such that you can have an access to your faculty respective faculty you can ask your questions whatever you have or whatever the case may be see what do you mean by attending these classes is not just not understanding the things on the day of conclusion at least you shall get some 70% syllabus in your mind at least that is what the intent of attending the classes there whatever the class it may be be it drafting or some other paper you shall be on par with your faculty that is what you meant by attending the classes if at all you have attended the classes now after one month you are opening the material or after two months you are opening the material this is as good as your self study what is there to study now so try to try to make some time try to invest some time on a daily basis and try to finish off whatever you have studied on the day i mean the topics or the concepts in your respective class clear everyone sir we are uh, we got bored of listening all these things yes of course but this is my duty to say you because uh, this self motivation is more matters rather than giving i mean rather than some person giving you motivation now you will think that yes i need to study this at any cost but in the evening or maybe in the tomorrow again the same thing we have got so much time so self motivation is what matters here so try to make out finished off as as soon as possible after that no one is there for question you for to question you so you can enjoy clear everyone so so we'll step into the subject now drafting appearances and pleadings see the for the old syllabus your subject name is drafting appearance and pleadings and the new syllabus it is drafting pleadings and appearances so doesn't matter anything here so now first of all before we enter into this uh, subject wise chapter 
why why this subject is uh, important why it is included in your uh, curriculum whether it is just for only for your certificate purpose i mean just for passing or whether it will be useful for your long term profession be it your employment or practice in what manner the subject is going to be helpful for you whether your profession in your profession whether this drafting subject has any play or just for sake of your certificate or passing a particular course you're just studying this tell me what do you mean by drafting first of all drafting in a normal parlance in a very 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 layman language it is writing something it is writing something writing or uh, writing maybe a by way of art writing some words whatever it is writing something now say for example maybe in your schools level in your schooling you would have written your leave letter to your principal like you know so to the principal so and so college so and so school i'm i'm so and so you write your name and the rule number and all sir i'm suffering from fever my doctor advised me to take rest for two months or one month whether you are suffering from fever or not that's a different case now you have written a leave letter to your principal and say for example the principal haven't uh, granted you a leave can you file a case against principal no right you can't why because the principal is not bound to grant you a leave because there is no legal relationship in this drafting part the leave letter the writing of leave letter is also nothing but a drafting part but we are not discussing about those draftings we are discussing about those drafting that is dealing with preparation of a legal document what do you mean by a legal document that means it is going to create a legal relationship between contracting parties between contracting parties say for example mr a the owner of a particular property he intends to lease out a property to mr b the lessee for that they have executed a lease deed they have executed a lease deed now this is a legal document yes it is a it is a legal document because this lease deed is creating a rights and obligations on part of mr a and mr b the lesser and the lessee so your legal documents is going to create certain legal relationships between the contracting parties and those kind of documents is what we are going to study in this particular subject say for example coming to our profession in what in where particular places what what shall be the scope of this drafting in our profession rather say for example you done with your uh, course you passed you started up your own practice and some businessman have come to you and said that sir i have 50 crore rupees with me i have 50 crore rupees with me i intend to do some software business i intend to do some software business i have three partners mr a b and c please give me an opinion please give me an opinion as to shall, what shall, what type of entity shall i opt for shall i go for the partnership form or llp or a company if company whether it is a private company or a pri public company so please give your opinion as to with a given facts what shall be the apt one for me for my business now can you simply say sir you please go for a private limited company now say you, you said that sir please go for a private limited company now what your client will ask sir why why a private limited company why not a partnership firm or why not a public limited company that means your opinion shall also be supplemented with certain reasons as to why you have given such opinion or advice now say for example you have asked me sir shall i go for shall i write all the three modules or two modules or one module now you cannot simply say you please write all the three modules because certain factors i need to consider like how much time is left where actually you are standing in your preparation whether you have attended the classes already or not so keeping in all keeping in view of all these particular factors i need to give an opinion to you i cannot simply blindly say that sir write down all the three modules or don't write right so 
the whatever the advice or the opinion that you are giving to your respective client that opinion shall be supplemented with the basic reasoning as to why you are giving such opinion that is nothing but your opinion writing or legal opinion sorry or yes opinion writing or legal opinion opinion writing or legal opinion whereby you need to give your opinion in writing uh, uh, also supplement with basic reasoning again the drafting scope have come into picture where you being a professional where you'll be giving lots of opinions to your clients or say for example yeah say you yeah, have given an opinion as to sir you please go for a private limited company now after that you are going to draft your moa and aoa who is going to draft this moa and aoa again the company secretary again the scope of the drafting of coming to picture again the scope of drafting of coming to picture say you are drafting this moa and aoa now the company got incorporated the company got incorporated the company has to conduct the board, board meetings and general meetings you need to give the notice and agenda the minutes part again the drafting comes into picture the company will execute different contracts with the third parties maybe some sale contracts the raw materials contracts or service contracts you may appoint some the managers the employees and all the employment contracts again the drafting scope have come into picture maybe you went up filing some cases against other parties or filing of cases or defending any particular cases again the scope of drafting so likewise say for example you have been appointed as a scrutinizer of a listed company you need to give a scrutinizer report your secretarial audit reports different audit reports that you may end up giving so in all these cases this drafting scope comes into picture and unless you know how to draft all these particular documents not that easy clear everyone now coming to the other part is with respect to appearances what do you mean by appearance simple appearing like say for example you are see the scope the duties of a company secretary can be categorized into the representational services or a normal secretarial activities the representational services means you represent a party before the bodies like say for example nclt or roc or rt so several authorities that may be established now whenever you are representing your client before such authorities what is the expected behavior from you or whenever there is a client meeting wherever there is a corporate meetings official meetings what is expected behavior behavior from a particular person what are the etiquettes that has to be what are the general etiquettes that you need to follow right from starting from your dressing etiquette how to dress yourself so from dressing etiquette till your dining and communication etiquettes is what we are going to study under that appearances part apart from that you are going to see as to who is that person who can represent a party before the body is established say for example for company side it says that a company secretary or a chartered accountant or a cost and management accountant or any other officer as authorized by the company can represent such company before the authorities so likewise some specific act gives a right to a particular individual as to who can represent such body or some company or some entity or some stakeholder rather clear everyone so those parts is what we are going to study in this appearances it's not only about your company secretary profession it's more of a general nature as to what is the expected behavior and the dressing etiquettes and the general professional etiquettes that is expected from a human that is what we are going to study in the appearances part and coming to the last topic that is pleadings whenever you are representing before these authorities i mean representing these bodies sorry the company is before these bodies or authorities in what manner you are going to argue and at the end of the day you are going to get some relief in favor of your client so whatever the arguments that you do the entire part is what we are going to study under the concept of pleadings clear everyone so pleadings you have one chapter appearances you have one chapter and the remaining of your drafting part that is nine for your nine uh, new syllabus you have 11 chapters for the new syllabus
clear everyone uh, 10 chapters for the old syllabus this is what we are going to study sir it's not more about theoretical part or drafting part it's combination and you can you don't have any segregation as to sir 50 marks will be asked for theoretical part and 50 marks will be asked for the drafting part there were some attempts where 20 marks only have been asked for the drafting part but in the immediate attempt 50 marks have been asked for the drafting so you have to be thorough with the concept then followed by the agreements too and this is totally a new subject for you unless you practice on a daily basis because we are dealing with some legal document you are dealing with some legal document you need to use some legal terms some terminology some technical terms you need to be used in your agreements part so you cannot use a general english clear so when can you get that unless you practice you can't clear apart from that sir do you have any difference between the old syllabus and new syllabus can i attend this batch or not this is what generally people ask me sir there is no difference between the old syllabus and the new syllabus for the new syllabus people two more chapters have been added up that's the only difference that is uh, about your ss1 and ss2 secretarial standards and the administrative framework the judicial framework is what is additionally been added to the new syllabus people clear everyone so there's the only difference both old syllabus and the new syllabus people can attend this batch no issues with that clear everyone the agenda for this particular uh, classes will be first of all you'll be understanding the concept followed by the agreement the majority of the agreements the terms and conditions you can get from the topic itself so if at all you are thorough with the topic then you can get that points now drafting part as to how you're going to phrase that that depends upon your practice yes of course we are going to study we are going to draft some agreements in the class but at the same time this has to be a win-win situation because we can't draft each and every agreement in the class so you need to draft some agreements in your home too so that you can get habituated with the terms and the terminology that to be used for your drafting part because i have already said you this is not a, this is not a you know you don't have any background for this chapter i mean for this subject because it's totally a new subject for you all clear everyone so this is all about drafting appearances and pleadings we haven't started the subject yet we just understood the subject name itself that's it so from the next session we're going to study we're going to start up with the chapter number one clear everyone so if at all you have any doubt you see wherever from wherever from you are you'll be attending the online classes and if at all you have any doubts you have my number please call me or text me and please clear your doubts do not move forward with the question mark on that particular topic clear everyone please do not hesitate you can text me or mail me you can call me directly and clear your respective doubts clear everyone so that's it from my side all the very best for your uh, examinations and your future and uh, from the next session we'll be starting this particular subjects clear everyone thank you take care bye bye and one more thing whether with respect to the postponement of examinations and all yes this been hard six seven months we didn't expect that this was coming the covid and and all but yes we need to understand the reality and move on we need to take care of ourselves your family and surroundings yes we need to but at the same time do not go with the speculations about your examinations and all please be ready with your examinations and uh, be whatever the, the let the isi takes its decision but you yourself you need to be ready for the examination as scheduled clear everyone take care of yourself uh, follow all the instructions whatever we have got and by taking care of your health which is more important than your examinations and all which is more important so take care of your health and start of your preparation clear all the very best take care bye bye